after Pastor Sherry asked me to preach today, she warned me that today's text is one of the most difficult in Scripture. <laughs> it was too late then to back out, but people of faith, the Jewish, Christum, Christian, and Muslim have wrestled with what it is to worship a God who would ask Abraham to sacrifice his only son. But context is important. Abraham and Sarah lived in a region and an era in which child sacrifice was a common thing. The surrounding nations commonly offered up their offspring as a sacrifice in order to curry favor with the gods they worshiped. Back in that era, pra these practices were routinely condemned by writers of the Old Testament. Faithfulness to the God of Israel was supposed to be require no such child sacrifice. Quite simply, this text is an anomaly when compared to everything else we think we know about God. The reason we struggle with this story is the fact that a culture is so far removed from the world in which Abraham and Sarah lived. Our society today is completely different from that era. Even the sacrifice of the ram from the thicket, which took Isaac's place, seems to go against our values to respect all of God's creatures. The fact that Abraham, Abraham could even consider such an act was because of his faith in God, and, that, and his faith resulted in his solution to the problem. We talk a lot about faith today. What you, what you might not be sure of is why it's such a big deal. What is faith? We hear people talk about it when things are good. I knew things would turn around if I just had faith. We hear people recommend it when they're not sure what to say. I'm sorry you're going through a rough time. Just have faith. And when others seem unfazed by life's obstacles, they might tell you, it's because I have faith. But what does faith mean? To one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. That's what Thomas Aquinas once said. Someone once said that faith means being sure of the things we hope for and not knowing that something is real even if we do, and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. So faith is being absolutely sure of what you hope for and cannot see. I believe it is more than that. We have all found at times that it can be very difficult to have faith. Every year thousands of people go to Grand Canyon to see this mighty wonder. If you have ever, never been there, you should try to go. It's so big, so stupendous that your can, senses cannot grasp its enormity. You have no words to describe it to others. But there are always people who push things to the limit. And each year, at least one tourist will get himself into trouble by not respecting the danger of the canyon. Such was the case a few years ago. A man got too close to the edge, trying to look straight down, and he slipped and went over the side. Knowing he had several thousand feet to fall ahead of him, he began clawing at anything he could get a hold of to stop the fall. He grabbed a hold of a tiny branch growing from the cliff. And there he hung, motionless, but not for long. As he did what, and he did what most people would do when they get in over their head. He called out for help and said, is there anyone up there who can help me? The, and he heard a voice saying, there was. He cried, tell me what to do. The voice knew there was a ledge about two feet below the man but the man could not see it. So the voice said, let go of the bush. And the man said, man did what we probably would do as well. Get me somebody else to talk to. <laughs> Sometimes when things don't go according to plan, we lose faith, not only in ourselves, but in also any potential outcome in our lives. Failure would do that to you. It's difficult to maintain theft, faith. But when we experience life's failures, it's easy to lose hope and to lose faith. But what's the difference between faith and hope? Faith at its core is deep-rooted, the expectation of good things to come. It goes beyond hope. While much of hope lives in the mind, faith is steeped in the heart and the spirit. It can't be explained away by reason or logic or be understood through a single, single dimension. Well, life can be hard at the best of times, faith is the knowledge deep down inside that things will get better. It's taking the next step, 
even when you can't see the end of the staircase. Simply put, life would, be, would fail to have reason if we didn't have faith. President Kennedy surprised many people of his day when he said he wanted to put a man on the moon by 1969. Why were people surprised? It was because at the time the technology to land on the moon did not exist. But he looked back, looking back at the situation, we could see that President Kennedy had a vision. He had faith in that vision. He was sure of what he hoped for and was certain of it, even though he could not actually see it. We couldn't drive our cars without faith that someone wouldn't cross over the line and crash into us. If we didn't have faith, how could we trust that an airplane, a machine flying at 35,000 feet in the air would not crash to the ground? How could we move from one moment to the next without completely second-guessing every last thing we did? Without faith, we couldn't expect things would turn out all right for us, no matter what the situation would be. Faith, then, is just as important as the air we breathe. While the oxygen in the air nourishes the body, faith nourishes the heart and the soul. It is the energy that courses through our beings. It's a part of every muscle and every strand of thought. It is the fundamental foundation of our life. Simply put, the importance of faith cannot be understated. People have moved mountains with their faith. Even when the situations seem bleak and dire, and it was their faith that carried them through. There's little or no explanation for it. So for the, in the physical realm, it's the fiber that binds us, carrying each of our deepest wishes and desires. That's where faith lives. Unfortunately, some people don't believe in things they cannot see. They explain things away due to other causes and effects, failing to find the small miracles in life that exist and work in our favor on a constant basis. There's an enormous level of importance attributable, attributable to having faith in life. The mind is an incredibly powerful tool. It can be used for good, but it can also go to waste when neglected or abused. In times of trouble, we tend to move away from positivity. We begin to see things in a negative light, but faith is a tool that helps us rejuvenate our spirit and regain our positive outlook. Whenever, whatever it is we focus on in life, we get more of. If we focus on our problems, we live solely in those problems and have difficulty moving past the negativity. Alternatively, however, when we focus on the positive and seek out solutions, we can resolve our problems and move into a positive state. When we train our minds to think positive and we hold unwavering faith and gravitate towards that, we attract good things because we believe and expect in good things to come. Similarly, when we believe in bad things and expect bad things to come, we will also attract that into our lives. It is easy to allow stress anxiety and fear to run our lives. We go from moment to moment worried about one thing or another. Sometimes these worries manifest themselves into highly stressful situations, causing not only mental anguish, but physical problems as well. There's a, well, a clear and documented connection between stress and increased likelihood of disease and illness. When we allow our minds to move into that realm unchecked, there is no telling of the damage that can be done. But it is faith that helps, helps to keep these things at bay. Even when we have no reason to believe things will get better, it's through faith that our situations do improve. When you hold the utter expectation that in your mind, no challenge is too difficult, faith is the pathway to finding solutions in life. And that pathway is steeped in faith and the expectation of greater things to come. No matter what the situation, no matter how bad it might seem, your faith can and will get you through. You must accept that as a fact and hold on to the expectation of greater things to come. Don't stop pushing or searching for an answer to help resolve whatever situation you might be facing in life. If you really want something in life, and I mean really want it deep down inside, you have to, and you have a strong enough reason to be absolutely that you absolutely must achieve it, faith is a thing that helps you to see through, see it through, and, at the, and it's at the core of a persistent heart. 
We say we all say we have faith, but it's one thing to say it and another thing to do it, to show it. We need to learn how to act in faith every time a problem shows up in our lives. We need to have others see our faith through our actions and not just our empty words. Never give up your hopes and your dreams just because you face some initial setbacks. Lean on your faith as often as possible and you will come to realize why having an unwavering faith is the most important thing in your life. Amen. Um.